Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. God bless you. Thanks for patronizing our channel. My name is Pastor Yemi Omoboyega. It's nice meeting you again. And uh, I want to talk about our dear brothers and sisters, the Igbo people. And I will title it Nobody Hates Igbo People. Nobody hates Igbo people but Igbos themselves. I want to commend the good works of Dr. Apoki. One of the videos he released in 20, about 2023, a year ago, talked about how other tribes in Nigeria hated the Igbo people. And honestly speaking, Dr. Apoki did a very marvelous work on that video. He reeled out the various qualities of these, our wonderful brothers and sisters, the Igbo people. Their enterprising nature, their persistent nature, um, their culture of having very big visions and not satisfying, not being contented with little things. Their domineering spirit. And let me explain that, not in a negative sense. If you are in a place and you are not performing, you are not improving yourself, you are not doing well, which is very common with our Yoruba people, my people in Yoruba land. And an Igbo man comes in there. He begins to explore, explore, explore opportunities. And then you later rise up to say, they are taking over from you. Why won't they? Because success, you see, it is failure that has excuses. Success does not have excuses. And success comes as a result of hard work, smart work, persistency, consistency, being, enter I mean, being entrepreneurial in nature. Not giving up, having large visions or dreaming big dreams. The Igbo people have, have all these qualities. I admire them. I admire them. Look, I'm from Ekiti State. Nearly all the houses that were being sold or that have been sold or are being sold in my state capital, Ado Ekiti, were bought over by the Igbo people from the lazy Yoruba people, Ekiti people, who ought to have done so well to succeed the generations before them better. What is the essence of having a family house, they are even struggling over it. Your parents left you with a legacy, a house. If you know how to manage it, it's an asset. And you are doing nothing about it until the house becomes dilapidated. And someone comes in, ready to buy, and he bought. And this person happened to have come from another tribe. And you are now saying that he's uh, domineering, 
dominion is taking over, he's doing everything, he's, he's greedy, he's this, is that. Stupid talk. Stupid talk. Did you not hear from the Bible that says, a slave that behaves well can overtake a freeborn in his own family house. If a slave behaves well, he would surely inherit the inheritance of a freeborn who is unserious. Look, from my personal experiences with Igbo people, forget about all this tribal thing that is uh, useless. They are very hardworking. They know where they are going. And they don't mind doing any form of jobs, all the jobs in particular, where our Yoruba boys, our Yoruba girls, the Yoruba girls will rather paint their fingers, the Yoruba boys will rather, I mean, sag and, you know, do, you know, they consider themselves to be bigger than any type of job and they want to make money, get rich quick. This is where the Igbo people stand out tall amongst the Nigerian state. Now, um, from my school days, I've been relating so well with Igbo people. I've related very well with the Ijo people. My closest friend from I and from Ijo is one Mr. Tombre. We are still relating till date. A very wonderful guy. A very humble guy. He's three years my senior. He should be about 70 years now. Thank God we are both alive. He's from Patani. And uh, yeah. In Bayelsa State, I hope it's Bayelsa now. Delta, anyway, Niger Delta. Very industrious. That's my friend from that side. From the core east, I have wonderful friends. Who have been so wonderful. We, you see, unless... We are speaking the dialects. He's speaking Igbo or Igbo. I am speaking Yoruba. You won't know. And we confided in each other. You know, and I have never been disappointed in him. That's one of them. Then coming to my office, may God Almighty continue to bless I don't know if Papa is, al is alive anymore now Dr. Oma Oke Eliazu the executive director of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria where I worked between 1979 and 1980 I think it's about 79 to 1982, 83 or so. The Manufacturer Association of Nigeria was the PA, the personal assistant to this gentleman. A very well-read somebody. Even some of my writing skills that I acquire today, I acquired it from him. The eloquence that I have today in terms of being able to discuss, you know, I was the one writing his speeches. I remembered one of the essays he wrote, you know, annually at Manufacturer Association of Nigeria. We used to present what we call pre-budget uh, presentations to the federal government. And I, Pastor Yemi Omoboyega, 
I am the one that was typing all these things. So I was able to know, to really go into the in-depth of Dr. Uma Oke, Eliazu's level of intelligence. Very, very eloquent, very, very intelligent, very, extremely kind. I thank God for the life of my brother then too, Pastor um, Olajide, who was the admin manager when I came in, who, whom I learned eventually became the assistant director or something, the assistant executive director or something. Maybe even became the, doc, the director, I, I can't remember. Then also I have another gentleman, Igbo gentleman, that is Mr. Uzo Okeke. He's late, he's of blessed memory. May his soul continue to rest in peace. Doctor, I mean, Mr. Uh, Uzo Okeke, when we are dis in fact, he guided me a lot during my stay in that organization. Then, Dr. Uma Oke Eleazu is the man that when I was to buy my first car in 1982, after he had approved my loan application for a car loan, it was in the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria that I first bought my first Volkswagen car in 1982 at Doyin Motors, very close to my place of residence. Dr. Maoki Eliazu even indeed offered to me to buy the very car he was using, fully AC, 504 car. It's just that from the very onset of my life, I had said that I would start with a new vehicle. That's why I took the loan and I went to buy a new car. And he was going to offer it to me at about 2000 something. And I bought my car then for, I think, 3800 or something. I just love to start with a new car. And that was the only thing that prevented me from buying Dr. Uma Eliazu's car. Dr. Uma Elia, okay, Eliazu, it was not long. I joined, I joined the Manufacturer Association. That was in 1980. And just three months after, I secured an admission into a college, Secretarial College, United Christian Secretarial College, a papa. Just barely three months after I joined that organization, I had the dilemma. How would I go to this school? It was a part-time school, yes. We begin our lectures by, I think, 2 or 3 p.m., I can't remember. It's in my autobiography. And I took... Well, after having prayed, after having... Look, people, nothing is impossible with God. If only you have the faith, and within a short time, you have demonstrated who you are. And people have seen, within three months of my joining the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, people have seen the qualities in me, especially Dr. Uma Oke Elias, the executive director whom I was attached, and Mr. Atunji Olajide, God bless him. God bless his children. God bless his family. And within those short periods, I had to, I didn't want to miss out that school. I prayed and I took my letter of application for study leave. Uh, you, that you are listening to me, can you employ somebody and he's just barely three months old and he's as, ap applying for study leave? I applied for study leave for the organization to grant me 
one and a half hours every day to attend to my lectures. Mr. Tunji Olajunde, the admin office uh, manager, was gracious enough because honestly, by the very nature of Mr. Olajunde, highly principled, straightforward, truthful, and but he does not condone indolence. He does not condone any form of pranks. He was a strong CAC member. And indeed, it was through him that I joined that company. His friend, okay, my friend, Mr. Sondi Olayinka from Obomosho, introduced me to Mr. Adiaga, his friend, his uh, boss in the office. And vacancy occurred at the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria. Mr. Uh, Adiaga, as well as Mr. Tunji Olajide, were very close friends. So Mr. Adiaga, my friend brought me to Mr. Adiaga. And Mr. Adiaga was working with the post office or something then. P and T at Oshodi. Kappa Oshodi. Then Mr. Adiaga, in turn, introduced me to Mr. Olajide for purpose of being employed. And I went there, I did my test, and I passed, and Mr. Olajide was very impressed, and I was employed. Three months thereafter, I was asking for study leave. He looked up, he looked down, that this is a difficult request, but God used him. I'm sure when he was recorded, mending me to Dr. Eliazu to grant that one and a half hours every day for me to meet a lecture at 3 p.m. and for me to leave office at 1.30 p.m. When he was recommending me to Dr. Eliazu, honestly speaking, I know that deep down his mind, he might not believe that Dr. Eliazu will approve it for me. And Dr. Eliazu, surprisingly, was used by God to approve that study leave for me. And it made a difference in my life because that was the only thing left for me to climb the ladder of the highest ladder, that is personal assistant status in the secretarial studies that I engaged in then. He approved of This is Dr. Uma Okeleazu that I never met from nowhere. I think I'm not too sure now if he's not from MBC local government or something. I can't remember. <laughs> eh? Oh, yeah. Anyway, it's from Emosha. It's not far from Uwiri. Dr. Uma Oki Eliazu did me great favor. That's why I pray if he's alive, may God continue to be with him. If he's no longer alive, because he was an aged man then. May God Almighty continue to bless the generations, generation of his family after him. May, they, may his children continue to receive favor from God and from man, wherever they are. That's Dr. Uma Oke okay, Eliazu. That's Dr. Mr. Um, Uzo Okeke, okay, okay, who was also the assistant director to him. I'm just focusing on the Igbo people, how good and how nice they can be. How about people from Cross River State, like Mr. What's his name now? Uh, I can't remember now. There are a lot of them from Calabar, from all that area. We're all together in the same office. And we're all useful to one another. Dr. Lezu, I was so junior, he didn't look at me as a small boy. Rather, he would counsel me, would recommend good things to me. In fact, it was from Dr. Eliazu's writing that I knew about the Peter's principle that 
you know, no matter how strong you are, you will get to your level of incompetence one day. I got that from his writing. He mentioned, he explained that concept. And I went all out to go into bookshops to search for that book until I found it. Peter's principle was wonderful. So I was lucky to work with somebody like, and I profited from working with Dr. Miley. Okay, he was very kind to me. How about my friend, Mr. Albert Okichuku, till today, this morning that I'm recording now, this morning, um, today is about 16th or 17th of October, 2024, and we met at the United Christian Secretarial School in 1980-81 session. Till this morning, later we worked together and we retired together and to today, we are in the same pensioners club and we are close, closest like as if we are from the same womb. These are the people. So when people are talking about, um, when people are being tribalistic, that's why I wonder. You see, all along in my life, I've never supported IPOB because to me, I see it as if we Nigerians, we don't, we are not, we, we are thinking backwards when we are talking of secession. And all of a sudden, somewhere, um, Yoruba nation came. I said, I never supported it. Because I'm better, just like uh, as President Obasanjo will say, I'm, I'm better a Nigerian than a Yoruba man. I have opportunities to relate with the Elsa people. Very pleasant. Forget about whether it's Elsa or Fulani. Forget about what happened at the headers or whatever, whatever. We are all gently going to overcome it together as a nation. And that, I think President Tinubu is doing a good job now. May God give him total victory over this menace. How wonderful. My friend, Mr. Shehu Garba, we worked together. And indeed, he took over from me when I was transferred to another department. And many people like that. I enjoy this nation, honestly. The geography, the, the, geography, the people, the land, the vegetation, the, the various types, you know, the desert, the, 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 the forest, the everything. I love it. I frequented Imo State, Oweri. Abia, Enugu, all the Niger Delta area, Lokoja, um, Pini, Asaba, Onisha, everywhere. I met with good people. I met with good people. I mixed. So I don't see anything wrong with any tribe in this nation. Forget about this myopic thinking that one tribe is better than the other. I mixed with the people from the South South, Rivers people. Very nice. Bayelsa people. Very wonderful. We all related as one. Going to the north. I used to spend my holidays with my family at uh, Joss. I spend my holidays in Abuja with my family, with my children. 
I spent my holiday up to Kaduna, Zaria, this nation. So you are now telling me if we break up, so I will now require visa to go to Enugu, to go to Kaduna, to go to Sokoto, God forbid. May that dream never come to be in Yehoshua's name. It is myopism. It is backward thinking. It is stupidity, honestly speaking, to consider breaking this nation. I'm in love with Nigeria. I'm in love with the people they are in. I'm in love with the landmass. I'm in love with the vegetation. I'm in love with the rivers and the oceans. I'm in love with the air. I'm in love with, just name it, from Sokoto to Badagri. From uh, all parts of east to the west. What a wonderful place. So may we not go backward in Yehoshua's name. Now, let me... What is even more? I'm grateful to God now. One of my children married from Plateau. Is it, no, ben, Benway. Benway State. So, my family is integrating. I know we'll get to Shokoto, we'll get to Enugu, we'll get... From my grandchildren, I know that something better will happen. Nigeria will become one. I love it. So those who are dreaming of secession, forget, leave them to them. They won't succeed in Yehoshua's name. They won't succeed. They won't succeed. It's a backward thinking. And I think we should be thinking forward. We should be looking at a better Nigeria. All that is happening to us in Nigeria is a leadership problem. We have corrupt leaders, yes. I will continue to change them until God gives us those whom God will use to really unite us and satisfy our yearnings. But never consider, never contemplate, or I will never contemplate in my mind for a second the idea of breaking up Nigeria. Now, coming to the issues that Dr. Apoki raised about other tribes hating Nigeria, why do you have uh, hating uh, Igbos? I want to tell you, and in fact, he was so passionate, thank God he related with the Igbo people. He, he himself, coming from um, um, the, I think, Ugeli, yes, all those Ugeli area. All those uh, K Dere B Dere in rivers and all that. What about Baro Farm? Everywhere I frequented, I was privileged to frequent. Wari was a wonderful base for me. I enjoyed the Banga soup. I enjoyed the people. I love them. So, talking about one tribe being better than the other is stupidity. It is a political gimmick. It is a divide and rule method just to cling the ticket to come and destroy Nigeria because that's what the past leadership have done. And they will no longer succeed in Yehoshua's name. So talking about Igbo people being hated, honestly speaking, I have a very different opinion sharp, which is in sharp contrast to Dr. Apoki's uh, point of view, because I know it, he addressed it somehow by saying that, look, those who are making trouble in Igbo land should stop making trouble. <laughs> the IPOB, the uh, whatever whatever group there, I said they should stop making trouble. He even challenged Epa, who is over there shooting arrows to his home base, and that they don't have interest in Nigeria. What contributions have they made or are making, or are they intending to make towards making Nigeria a better place? Everybody ran away. 
I love that. However, I want to tell you, nobody, you see, even if you say you hate somebody, the works of his hand will elevate him over you. I don't consider that anybody hates Igbo. If there is anybody that hates Igbo people, it is the Igbo people themselves. Bible says a house that is divided against itself shall collapse. Igbo people are divided. Too divided. And from the way they are still going, I want to tell you. They are the ones that gave room for other people to come in. To kind of appear as if they are marginalizing them. Because they don't come together as one. Let's take this previous election that went on in Nigeria. Apart from the previous ones. Igbo people had a good chance of winning that election. But it was frustrated because they never united. If people like, it was even a fairy fairy that at the very hottest period was appealing passionately for people like late, may so rest in peace now, late Iwayan. Who was the president of the Igbo people then? Uh, the socio political leadership. That he should do everything to unite his people so that they will win that election. What is the essence? Kalu. Mr. Uzo Kalu, the owner of uh, the Sun newspaper, saying that he would rather back another tribe than to back his own people and then to back any other people if he was not given the ticket to become the president. Why? When Peter Obi has finally arisen. If Igbo people cannot unite, this is what will be happening to them. It is sad. And it gives me, my heart bleeds anytime I see how disunited the Igbo people are. Igbo people should gather together once they are able to feature a candidate, common candidate. Everybody should wait for his turn. The only thing that affects, that I know affects Igbo people is that, look, everybody wants to be, to hold the same position. No one is giving up for the other. There is no compromise candidate. And in the process, other people snatched it away. You can't find this in Hausa land. You can't find this in um, Yoruba land. Even if they are there, both in both tribes, they are in the minority and they don't have weight. But in the Igbo land, these people who will not cooperate with themselves are higher in number than those who will cooperate with themselves. Who says Igbo people were hated? You see, even if Igbo people were deliberately, if efforts were there to deliberately manipulate Igbo people out of power, some, God knows how to cause something to happen that will make the people pl plotting against them to sleep off. And by the time they will wake up, the Igbo people, would, the Igbo presidency would have happened. But Igbo people are not united. There is no spirit of give and take. Everybody wants to be at the same place at the same time. The whole of the people, the whole of the aspirants, nobody wants to step down for the other. For the other. Nobody. And those who are not willing to compromise for themselves are in the majority. That is why we have this. Who knew that? I said something will happen. 
that will make them to be there even before anybody realizes. Who says Igbo people cannot rule Nigeria? And the previous election, this 2023 election, is a good pointer to the fact that who knew that Peter Obi could win Lagos State at the presidential, presidential polls? Forget about the distraction, yet he won Lagos State. And that's how it will be. There will be distractions, but whoever will win, will win if they are, if they are united. And I said something could happen. Do you know why? Peter, it's not a Peter Obi's popularity. It's not, in fact, Labour Party is not strong. The factors that were responsible for Peter Obi's victory in Lagos State is because of the past misdeeds of the APC government, especially the stand they took in terms of answers. That attracted youths from all walks of life. It's just like the votes that Abiola Ghana during his um, uh, presidential ambition are united. That singular occurrence in Lagos State, people were unhappy with the incumbent governor. And they were unhappy with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, president to be there, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, for the stand he took. So people voted massively for the opposition. And PDP's factor also came in. PDP divided against itself and then made Labour Party to have upper hand in Lagos. Both at the um, governorship and presidential ele elections. Lagos would have been by today. Nigeria would have been ruled by an Igbo man. So, if we are talking of people being hated, nobody will love you as to give you a promotion to a level. You have to struggle. It's a political struggle. And not until you are able to do give and take amongst yourselves and you produce a consensus candidate that everybody, majority, will vote for, you will not be able to. It's not because of, uh, yes, Peter will be campaigned very, he did very well, even well as he did during his governorship campaign. He did well in education, he did well in health, he did well in uh, road construction, he was prudent, he was everything that a good governor should be, but that did not qualify him to make it. He did not command in his personality, personal self, he did not command enough populists to make him win that election. It is the truth. The party he was in was weak. If he was in PDP, maybe he would have made it. So, it is not that people hated Igbo people. Now, the Lagos saga, the threats here and there, that one will be present anywhere. There is struggle for power. People will use any, they will really use religion, they will use tribe, they will use everything to win. But if God wants to scatter them, it, something will happen that will make the people to turn their back against themselves. And the person that the Lord wanted will win. It has happened in Lagos State. Who knew, N uh, who knew um, NRC, so SDP, NRC, yes. Who knew uh, the NRC in Lagos? But when Agbala Jobi and Edu, the, the governorship aspirant, at, as, as aspirants, could not unite. Oh, not SDP, I think it's UPN now. UPN by was MPN. Who knew? Who knew the NPN? But Papa Otedola, his name spoke for him, reflected. What happened to him reflected his name. When you plot evil against somebody and that person triumphs, Otedola. 
Otedola became the governor because Agbala Jobi and Edu could not agree. The frustration of that election will be one major factor that led to the sudden death of late Agbala Jobi. So something happened and he that would not have been became the governor of Lagos State. The rest is history. It was the same history that was repeating itself. You see, the house of UPN then was divided. Then there was protest vote for Papa Otedola because God has proposed it that he will become the governor, even if it belongs to the worst party, the most unrecognized party. So, brethren, <laughs> My Igbo people, you need a lot of work to do. So long as you cannot be conscientious in your approach, you cannot have a common front. I remembered when um, there was this clamor in Lagos State, one of my ogas where I was working, aspired to become the Indigbo, is the Indigbo of whatever, come and see opposition from fellow Igbo men. And in the process, I think uh, Lagos State never encouraged that thing to happen. Because even the kind of campaign of calumny, as if you are not the same, you will not step down for one another. And eventually, the whole thing was thrown overboard. I don't think uh, the Lagos State eventually allowed that thing to happen. Because you will not agree with one another. There is a point you pursue your ambition to, then you look at the overall interest of the people, of your race, or of your tribe, and then you surrender. That's what Yoruba has no best to do. How many people love President Bola Ahmed Tinubu? How many people loved him? Except the APC member, those of us who really loved, who knew his value. One major thing that I will never forget of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu that he did for me in Lagos. I never knew him. I wanted to launch my books. I wrote to the governor's office, and not only did he send representatives, he gave me money. I never knew him. If there is anything that endeared me to him to say, ah, no matter the ambition of this man, if I that is unknown can profit from his administration, then if this man becomes the president of Nigeria, the whole Nigerians will, will, will benefit. And I'm happy he's doing it now. You may criticize him. He, he, he inherited a big shoe that his, does not fit his size. His size. So he's trying now to get the shoemaker to mend it to, so that his leg will fit and God will help him to succeed. Am I not talking of Dr. Omar Okeleazu? Is he my tribe? Today, if head has me to wear the crown and I meet anybody from Imo State, I meet anybody from Ibo land and, you know, what will prevent me from extending a hand of fellowship to my brother from that side? The same thing with us in our land. What will prevent me? Because I have left religious bigotry alone, I have left tribal sentiment alone, I have left, uh, left anything that is a backward thinking alone because I'm objective in my mind, thinking forward, not backward. So, when you look at all this, nobody hated our Igbo brothers. Let them go back to the drawing board at home. Let them learn to let go for one another. Then, the country, Igbo people, it's not difficult. 
They have more supporters, let me say, from Yoruba land, from Hausa land, than from among themselves. That's the reality. Take it or leave it. So, Dr. Apoki cursing those who hated the Bola people, you know, doing that and that and that. He did it out of passion. He did. No, but to me, I disagree that anybody hated the Igbos until they go back to the drawing board. Their house is divided against itself. So to stand, and if care is not taken, other tribes will continue to take advantage of them because we say we want women in power. Women are not joining politics. They are not participating in anything. They will remain quiet and there they say give us 50% of the positions. Eh, in politics, don't you know that in politics it's a struggle and people don't bother whether there is justice or not. Honestly speaking, this past election, nobody should have struggled it with the southeast zone. Nobody should have struggled, but when the house was divided, another south, the southwest took it. If care is not taken, that's how it will be for a long time until the Igbo people come together as one. Nobody hated them. I don't agree. They hated themselves. And may God help them to overcome this problem. It is my endless desire to see an Igbo man becoming the president of Nigeria. But they will not just be picked like that. They have to struggle. And if they cannot collectively struggle to, to gain it, then it will continue to elude them. They should stop undoing themselves. They should be united. They should be um, coordinated. They should let go for one another. You can't beat them in kind of enterprising nature. You can't. Hard-working people, very creative. Go look at them in the literary world. Look at late Professor um, Shino Achebe. Look at Cyprian, okay, Cyprian Equency. I think he's an Igbo man too. I read some of his book. Shimamanda Adiche. Look at the exploits she's doing in the US. Look at the exploits that Okonjo Iweala is doing. Look at the exploits of late Onyeka. Look at the exploits. There's this guy that wrote, um, can't remember now, very popular one too. So what are you saying? They have what it takes to rule a nation well, but will they allow themselves to get there? That is the question. I think I've made my views known, little as it may be. I cannot be campaigning for somebody that I know the house is not in order. Another opportunity is coming. There are many more opportunities that will, will come from time to time. The day Igbo people stop protesting, stop saying, stop saying that we are marginalized, we are this. That is the day, and then united together to fight a common cause to become to take over the leadership of Nigeria, that is the day Igbo people will get out of all the problems. Enough of IPOB, enough of um, uh, ESN, enough of all this propaganda all over the radio. Promoting religious but promoting a tribal sentiment, promoting all from, you know, destroying other people with their mouths and all that. It's not good. And then destroying themselves with their own mouth and did. The day they overcame, the day they overcame all this, that's the day that Igbo people will be truly liberated. I wish them the best of luck. God bless Nigeria. I think, let me stop here. Please share this video to all Igbo people that you know. We love them. I, Yemi Omobwega, I love Igbo people. They've done me well. 
they've done me well. I wish them well. I wish they should. That's just one thing that this disunity is what I want them to remove from their um, their approach. And they will get there. God bless you. Please share. Like this video. Share it extensively. And then press the notification button so that you get to know. Pass your comments as you deem fit. Please be civil. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.